Hello, demonstration of an MEIS2 question on normal distribution um, and hypothesis testing of a sample from a normal. And I've used the June 2010 uh, paper, question three as an example. So as ever, the first thing we do is I'll read the question. In a men's cycling time trial, the times are modelled by a random variable x which is normally distributed with mean 63 and standard deviation, 5.2. So our x is normal, mean 63, standard deviation is 5.2. So we put in the variance there, we put the square in. Okay, what's the first thing they're asking us to do? Find the probability that x is less than 65 and then find the probability that um, x is between 60 and 65. OK, so let's move on quickly. There we are. Right, so we're going to do the find the probabilities. The first thing we're going to do is to draw our diagram. So here, our mean or 63, um, the x value we're interested in is 65, and we're interested in less than, so it's this area to the left. Um, what's the best way to get this out is to get our calculator out. So let's do that. Um, we're distribution, normal, NCD, because that's what we're interested in. And we're going from a very big negative number, so I'll put in minus for minus infinity in effect, minus 99999. Our upper value 65 here is 65. Our, excuse me, let's go back to there. Our standard deviation is 5.2 and our mean 63. Press the execute button. First row down, we get 0 0.6497. That's the first question. A. B says between 60 and 65. So we are now interested in this area here, side the side of our mean of 63. So again, we get our calculator out and we can just reuse what we've just done. Except now our lower value is going to be 60. There we go. So that's. 0.3677. So that's the answer to the second part. I'd always suggest you do four decimal places. Okay, what have we got next then? So look in blue. Find the probability of five riders selected at random, all record times of between 60 and 65. Well, actually, we've just worked out that probability for one, haven't we, up here? So let's use that. Okay. So here we are in blue. What's the probability of five riders all into it 60 and 65? Well, in effect, we've got a binomial now with n equals 5 and the probability is 0 0.637. So the probability that x equals 5 there is just going to be 0 0.367, our other probability to the power 5, which is going to give us this number in our calculator, 0 0.006731. OK. Flying along now, aren't we? Right, let's have a look at the next uh, part three. A competitor aims to be in the fastest 5%. Now, always worth of entrance, always worth reading this every word, i.e., those with the lowest times. You could, if you're in a hurry, just be looking at the top end, but we're actually only interested in the lowest time. And then it says find the maximum time that he can take. Okay, so let's have a look at lowest so we're interested in the lowest five percent so if we drew our diagram now for this one we've got a mean of 63 haven't we and what we're interested in is right down this bottom end where the area is zero point um zero five five isn't it so again we get our calculator out and this time we're going to use our inverse normal distribution inverse normal what interest well we're interested in the left hand end here aren't we for the extreme we want an area of sorry of 0 0.05 we've got standard deviation of 5.2 and a mean of 63 they came through press the execute button and we get the answer 54.45 to four decimal places again always work to that there we go so that's got us the first half questions hasn't it out the way so how far up are we um that's just got 11 marks that's pretty good going isn't it okay so now let's read uh, now we've got a separate part two and this looks like hypothesis testing there we go we can see the word hypothesis testing so let's read um, the question it is suggested that holding the time trial on a new course may result in lower times 
To investigate this, a random sample of 15 competitors are selected. These 15 do the time trial on the new course. The mean time taken for these riders is 61.7 minutes. So that's our mean of our new sample. You may assume that the times are normally distributed and that the standard deviation is still 5.2. Carry out a hypothesis test to investigate whether the times, times on the new courses are lower. Okay, so that's what we're going to be tasked to do. And the question actually asks us write down suitable null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis, then carry out the test at a 5% significance level. Okay, here we go then. So part two. The first thing we want to do is define what we're going to use. And in this one, we're interested in the mean, aren't we? Because our H0 is that the mean is unchanged um, at 63 minutes, because that allows us to do all our calculations reliably. So that's our existing position. Which means we've got to define mu in this case is that the mean time is going to be the mean time on our new course. So we get a mark for writing that. We're going to get a mark for writing that our null hypothesis is the status quo that the mean is 63 minutes. And then we've got to come up with a suitable H1. Our H1, we're interested in it being lower, weren't we? The times were lower. Therefore, we're going to use mu is less than 63 as our H1. OK. Our test statistic. Well, our test statistic was that we had um, a sample with a mean of 61.7 minutes. Yep, so that's going to be our X bar, and we're going to calculate our probabilities to look at that test statistic. OK. Now, given we're working with the status quo, then the distribution of our individual um, riders um, times will be normally distributed with a mean of 63, standard deviation of 5.2, which we show squared. But what we've got here is a sample, isn't it? Our sample of 61.7 or 15 riders. So the distribution of the sample is going to be normal with a mean of 63 but with a standard deviation of sigma of the population over root n. So that's 5.2 over the root of 15. So that standard deviation for our, our sample means is 1.42. OK, good. So now let's draw our graph then, uh, our shape here. So here we've got our mean of 63. We've got a standard deviation of uh, 1.42. So our status quo, h naught is that it's 63. We've got a test statistic at 61.7 uh, which is lower and we can go into our calculator now and we can work out our probability of that occurring. So let's do that. So here we go. Up again, distribution normal, NCD. So now we're interested in our lower value is going to be, again, a very big negative number because we're going to minus infinity. Our upper value is 61.7 because we're looking at our left tail here, aren't we? Our standard deviation, well, it's our 5.2, but we've got to divide by our square root of 15. Here we go. So that's our 1.34. Sorry, that was wrong on here, wasn't it? That should be 1.34 there, shouldn't it? OK. And our mean remains at 63. So pressing our execute here, we get our probability here of probability that that occurs of our test statistic is 0 0.666. So that's the area under the curve. And they said to us that they wanted us to do this with a significance level of 5%. So our critical value, because it's a one tail test here, isn't it, is going to be, critical value is going to be 0 0.05. So there's our critical value. OK, which is more extreme, isn't it? So that's our critical region. Our test statistic is not in our critical region, which would be our H1 area. It's in our, it's near our, near our mean, isn't it? Therefore, it's in our HO area. So if we start writing this up now, then the probability of our test statistic is 0 0.166, which is greater than the critical value of 0 0.05. So it's not significant, H naught's accepted, and using the wording for S2, we'd write insufficient evidence to conclude that. And then lift the figure out, the, the thing they asked us to test, which is that the times on the new course are lower. So there we are. 
answered the question. Here's my little summary of normal distributions and sample hypothesis test. Please do draw a diagram like I've done. Do use your calculator. Remember, if you're working with the sample, then the distribution of the sample, it's got the same mean, mu, but its standard deviation is sigma of the population over root n. Then you're going to use those stats to do the rest of the calc. In the hypothesis testing, you're going to assume that all of this is part of the parent population, nothing's changed. Your H1 is then going to depend on your context. Your test statistic is going to be your Z value that are from your test sample, which is usually your X bar, and you're going to be looking for the probability that goes with that. And then you're going to compare it with the critical value and you're going to look at the extreme probability, so it's going to be less than if you're on the left-hand tail or right, right, uh, greater than if you're on the right-hand tail, and that'll take you to the end. Hope that's of use.